Oh, she says, wait a minute, dude. let's not go there. Don't, don't Six. Think about it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have, uh, you know, I was going to speak at the very end of this. I'm not because I don't really need to. You've heard enough of me today. Uh, but we do have Cindy. Cindy. Eisen. Eisen. Okay, and that is Linda's realtor is going to come yes. up and talk to us a little bit. So give it up for Cindy. <laughs> Sometimes we have to do a little toggling. Is that the background screen you have there? Yeah, it's just it? just looks just like that. Okay. Hmm. And your mouse, I don't see it moving. Computer's not locked up, is it? Okay, let's go, let's try it. Let's turn a little more. I'm not sure what those lines are. So. Oh, it looks like maybe the computer's frozen. Yeah, so it's, it's frozen. I'm just giving it a quick reboot. You should be totally fine. Thank you. Right. Right. I'm not um, sure what it was. It was fine, and then we plugged it in, and it did that. So they're no. So we'll they don't think they care. Sure. Good, good, good. Thank you. Texas board. Thanks, man. Spent uh, 26 years at the university <laughs> doing tech support. Sure. I said to Michael, my son, you're providing tech support, web support for people doing different things. What is your credibility for doing this? And he thought for a minute, and I said, here's the picture of you at three years old, sitting at the computer next to dad. That's how long you've been doing this. He's good. He's built me out a number of times. Yeah. There you go. Hey. 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 Yes. In California. In California. Um, no, it should be all good. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to take a little tour. Um, I live in Lompoc. Lompoc rolls. Yeah. I could do the clicker. I could do the arrow. I don't mind. Um, but the clicker has a, a laser on it, right? Probably more interested in that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, it, I know from being in the office that a lot of people, they don't know where Longpoke is, and sometimes they've been there. And it, it's so funny. It is totally funny because they'll go, They'll call up the office 
and uh, they'll go, is it really 76 degrees there today? <laughs> and you're like, you know, and then there's always the dead giveaway. It's like, Lompoc, where is Lompoc? You know, and they, they say it like that, and you're like, okay, let's start from the beginning. So, Lompoc is the correct pronunciation. It is a shoe match word. It means little lake. And there's, I don't really know what little lake they're talking about because there's like some springs, some natural springs, but there's no like water skiing or anything like that. So Lompoc is a shoe mash word. That's the correct pronunciation. When you call Coldwell Banker Select Realty in Lompoc, <laughs> just ask for that. And uh, Susan is my colleague. She is going to help me today and give some handouts for you. And we're just going to, what we're going to do is, in preparing for this, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do it, because I knew a lot of people were not familiar with it, uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to do it like a real estate agent, because that's what I am. So about 50 to 55 miles north and west is where Lompoc lies. And when you drive in on Highway 1, the Pacific Coast Highway, this town is on PC, the PCH, so the iconic drive from LA all the way up, you will go through this town. And this is the first sign that you will see when you arrive there. And so yeah, we do embrace, it's the city of arts and flowers. It used to be the flower seed capital of the world, but we had to change a little bit, and I'll tell you why in a minute. We embrace um, local artisans. We do, um, there's a lot of painters and crafters we have a mural society, and so I've woven the murals in to the slideshow because they depict Lompoc in the past, the present, and in the future. It's kind of fun. This is Monarch Madness, and you can go throughout the town on a walking tour, and you can see these murals painted on the sides of some of our old buildings and some of the newer structures. This is uh, depicting one of the first mansions in Lompoc, so old times. Um, very fun, and of course the flowers. Uh, we were, the larger seeds was huge in Lompoc, and they started by harvesting mustard seeds, and so that whole flower seed thing got started because of that. So after the mustard, they started growing other things. Stocks, delphinium, uh, bells of Ireland, lobelia, marigolds, all of it, and they harvested seeds. Now the focus isn't so much on the seed collection, but more on the cut flowers. And when you come in springtime, it does look like this. Sweet peas just in abundant bloom with sweet fragrances on the breeze. It is really super cool. So I'm hoping by the end of our talk today, one, you will be inspired to take this day trip. So everybody be kind of thinking of maybe just two <laughs> things that you might like to drive to Lompoc to do. It's a great way to just spend a day and then be back home pretty quickly, right? Yes. You can get out of there just as well. You can get out of there just as well. There's no traffic. I mean, it's, it's really a great destination. I've got a question for you. Yeah, sure. How do you think uh, or have you seen any increase in traffic people growth due to the Air Force Base and all these things that are going to be launched through Elon Musk and all the other companies that are going to use that site to get their satellites up there. People like to go watch launches. Do you see it? Yeah. So, so here's a joke on the whole launch affair. And on the base, when you come to Lompoc to watch a launch, they say it is the greatest, most fantastic launch you've ever heard. And that's because it's foggy. Not all the time. Not all the time. But um, write this down. <coughs> Spaceflightnow.com. Spaceflightnow.com has the launch schedule. And I think when we were at the Vandenberg Air, Vandenberg Air Force Base update, they were talking about 17 launches in a year. So that's a little more than one a month. And there's opportunities, not just at night, when it's absolutely spectacular, but often foggy, there are opportunities in the day. So if you're going to make that drive, come during the daytime hours, and Space Flight Now will have that schedule on there. So um, in regards uh, answering the questions to increased traffic, 
not really. No, not so much. Um, there was one. There, oh, there was one launch that went up, that and it was the Mission to Mars one. And I, they were having like uh, viewing parties and stuff like that. And so I get up at like what three in the morning or some crazy hour. I'm like, well, I'm I'm gonna go see this. There were cars lined up and parked everywhere. And so I started asking people. I'm like, my gosh, where are these people from? They drove from L.A. Everyone's got Starbucks, you know, <laughs> and they were standing. It's getting to be more of a thing because growing up, it was like, oh well, another lunch. But now it's like, what are all these Teslas doing in town? There, there's yeah, there's a few yeah. traffic wise. There's some nice cars, you know. You're like, who is that? You know, like, so yeah, we're we're seeing a little bit of a change that way. Um, but yeah, don't. Uh, if you want to hedge your bet, come in the daytime. They do get scrubbed. Scrubbing means they get delayed. So if a launch is scrubbed, you may, you know, then that way you can visit some of the other cool things in town. And, and a launch can get scrubbed um, for a lot of reasons. Maybe the weather's not quite right. There might be more wind than they need. They might just not be ready. So um, anyway, it, it's, it's really a fun thing to be a part of Vandenberg Air Force Base. Um, some of the satellites that we launch will, you know, take beautiful pictures like this. So, Lompoc is cool in that you can always find yourself on the map, okay? That <laughs> you're always between, there's a little cup on the coast of California, you can always find yourself. And another thing is this here. This is a diatomaceous earth mine. So this is a, I'm gonna share with you some of the unique things about Lompoc. And diatoms are, microscopic ocean planktonic creatures. Um, there was a concentration of them as this land was thrust up. And so a whole bunch of them died in these areas where it's all white. And so their exoskeletons are left over. And so the mining is removing the diatoms from the earth and then they use that product as, um, they use it in a lot of things, but the main things are filtration products for like swimming pools, beer, you know, other soft drinks and things. So uh, the diatomaceous industry there, it, I can't say it's a huge employer of our town, but it, it is, um, it, it's something that's unique to our area, okay? Alrighty, so what we're gonna do, is our drive uh, is we're going to go around the perimeter of 93436, okay? When you come in, this is Highway 1. This is your uh, Pacific Coast Highway. You're going to come in and see the wine glass there if you can way back there. There's different areas to 93436, Lompoc. And every corner of the town has a totally different flavor than other corners of the town. For instance, um, the, the south side of town here is where you'll find older homes, really cool um, <coughs> early 1900s, late 1800s homes. You're going to, uh, the beach is here, okay? And then flower fields here, Vandenberg Village, there's golfing here. And then over here, Mesa Oaks. And so there's homes and um, different things to do in every single corner. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to where the first uh, residents of Lompoc lived, and that would be the Shumash Indians. And they, they lived in Thule huts, and they lived there thousands thousands of years before the first Europeans showed up. And when the first Europeans showed up, they built a mission. And so part of your day trip is going to be to come and visit the mission. And the best day to visit, I think, is um, the first weekend, write that down, first weekend of every month, they host what's called People's Day. And People's Day is when all the volunteers dress up in period costumes. They speak to you as people back in the day would speak. For instance, if you ask a soldier, he's like, okay, well, what's that gun? And he will you know, speak in a Mexican accent and he will tell you all about his pistol you know, or his attire. They'll be making tortillas, they'll be spinning wool, they might be shearing sheep, they might be tanning hides, they might be dipping candles. 
Um, they occasionally have a grape stomp. I mean, so it's, it's truly uh, an immersion back uh, in time for you. And it's a, a great place for kids to go and run wild. You know, you'll be like the best grandparent ever, you know, because they can tear around. So it's really fun. Being big, hmm? I think the property is really big. It's thousands of acres. It's yeah. hiking, walking. You can have dogs on leash. You can trailer in your horses. Um, bikes can be there. It's it's really a great just to place. Just go and walk and hike. It's just a beautiful area just to go to sure. see nature. I think. It sounds like you've been there. I've been there once at a time. Yeah, and it's one of the um, most authentically re um, restored missions in the whole system. And you're not in a town. You're not near any stores. Nothing like that. You're out in the country, just like. The mission people. Did you have a question? So is it? Uh, you said the first weekend. So is it the yeah. first full Saturday, Sunday weekend that they're costume? Mm -hmm. I think it's the Saturday. Saturday. The first okay. Saturday. And just um, go on La Parisima. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a it's a county park or it's a state park. Excuse me. So it's probably on there. But you can see that it's very very large. They'll occasionally have events <coughs> there. This is the bell tower. They're um, the wedding scene from Seabiscuit was filmed right out in front of there, and I got a little poison. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, but it's it's truly a, a very cool experience, and it that's no bull. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Um, actually, I think this is an ox. So if you want to get up close and personal with some animals, um, botanic garden, just come on over. The visitor center is open the entire time that the park is open. So it's very fun. Bring a picnic, and um, the uh, let's talk about what to do after you get all hiked out when you're there, and then you've had a lot of fun outdoors. You might want to go inside, um, and I'm going to show you this mural first. Back, um, the Lompoc Land Company. First, okay, how many of you guys uh, live in Santa Barbara? Anybody live in Santa Barbara? Okay, all right. Think about $500,000. What does that buy you in Santa Barbara or the city that you're from? A shoe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, my <one> point. <laughs> so, um, the Lompoc Land Company scrapes together $500,000 and they buy 43,000 acres which is the town of Lompoc, and they do it so that they can purposely create a temperance colony, okay? So in this town, this brand new town that they, that they create, um, they, you know, there's, it's pretty straightforward, no drinking. Well, these ladies catch wind of some drinking going on, and this depicts a true story. Talk about massive action, massive action. These ladies, they rope this structure and they pull it off its foundation so that they can destroy the, the structure where people are getting drunk. So that's where we're found on our right. <laughs> so that's fun. And the, the funny, one of my favorite things in Lompoc is this. Okay? <laughs> I don't know what they would think about this. There is a winemaker in Lompoc. This is Susan's son-in-law, and this is his label. And I love the wine extra just because of that label. But the wine is very good. And so, uh, come on, we're going to go into the wine uh, area. And this is where all the tasting goes on. There's over 30 wineries in Lompoc, in the city, and down to 46 where you can go and taste the grapes of Santa Rita Hills. Okay, Santa Rita Hills is special, like special on the globe. Because of our geography, the mountains run east and west. And so that allows the coastal fog to come in and cool the fruit. And that gives it a certain flavor that you can't find other places. Um, anybody ever been to Arizona and tasted wine? Don't do that. Just, <laughs> just really, don't do it. Um, it's, yeah. This is the Santa Rita um, Wine Center. It's a, it's a cool old building. It used to be a processing site for the diatomaceous earth, and then they revamped it. And so now you have, the, you have a, a beautiful porch, and then you can go in and you can taste wine. 
in there. And it doesn't ever really get crowded, but it gets a little hopping on the weekends. And so if it's a little too busy for you, all you have to do is cruise like half a block and you're going to be in a different industrial kind of area in the wine ghetto. Anybody heard of the wine ghetto? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, it's, it's not really ghetto. It, it's, it's industrial. It's an industrial area. And the reason it was termed the wine ghetto is so that it could take some of the formality out of enjoying wine. So um, they just they gave it this funny name, this quirky name, because it's in a quirky place. You know, it's kind of like when you go to New York and you go into the speakeasies and you got to go like find these places to go down in these bars. This is a little bit similar in that it looks like you're going to go buy pipe fittings or you're going to go do something like, like that. Right? Yeah, you know, go down the driveway and there'll be all of these signs from all these different wineries. And when you go into them, it's like a whole new world. You can relax, you can play games, you can watch stuff, there's live music, you can take your dog. You know, there's dogs in these places. Susan and I, we, you know, we preview a lot of houses in Lompoc. We like to keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on. And so we're like, you know what? Let's go knock some doors and try to sell this warehouse that we have listed. So we were like, let's go to the wine ghetto. And so we went in these places and each one is totally different. And the wines are very different depending on how the winemaker mixes their grapes. So you can have a lot of fun there, but be careful because we do not want you ending up here. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is the Longhoe Valley Medical Center. There's a hospital there, and we do have a cancer center in Lompoc. Yeah. I've heard that uh, the wineries and the people up there are doing that are a little bit concerned because Santa Barbara County now is the largest producer of marijuana legally. Do you have any sense of what's going on in Lompoc with that? Oh, man. Yeah, sure. Um, cannabis is part of our lives now. It just is. Uh, sometimes there's communities they don't really like to talk about it. You like know. The whole thing. <laughs> so I was over there, right? And this guy goes, so this real estate agent goes, hey, so talking kind of low, you know? He goes, so uh, do you mind if I ask you about cannabis? <laughs> you know, like, like, oh, dude, it, it's just legal. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah, so it, it is a part of our, our community. Um, I think our community is handling it well. We went to a, a community gathering where the city was represented by the planner and another guy. The police department was there, the fire department was there, a cannabis grower was there. And they, um, they had said that they were all collaborating. They talked to other, other cities <gasps> where cannabis was legal and they were um, asking them for assistance on how to do this in a way that it, you know, that it would not detract from the community. So it's new, you know, this is still new. I think the voting is still out. We don't really know yet. Um, so, but no changes. Hmm? no real changes to the town. You should go check.